Mr. Udall. Good morning, Mr. Secretary. I can speak for Senator Rich. I know he would volunteer his garage if you need it. And I wanted to, I know he represents INEL, I represent NREL, and you know I'm very proud of their accomplishments there. And I want to continue to work with you to see if their good work continues. And in your budget, and in my estimation, you go a long way towards supporting that lab's critical programs, which are focused on developing innovative renewable energy technologies that clearly have translated into lasting, well-paying jobs, a more comprehensive energy portfolio, and the national security that comes with energy independence. So kudos to you. I know this is in a tough fiscal environment, a tough budgeting process, but I want you to know I support what the President and you have put together. Now that I mentioned how important NREL is, financing is also really crucial to our energy future. Would you speak to the fact that we're at a really critical juncture here in regards to the PTC, the Production Tax Credit? It's been very instrumental in the expansion of deployment around our country. Every state has a stake in this, whether the states are producing wind in any significant amounts because of the supply chain that's developed. This very important policy expires at the end of 2012. Would you speak to the ramifications if we don't extend the PTC in the time frame that we have left? Yeah, very quickly. I think things like Production Tax Credits are a way to stimulate moving forward to get deployment in the marketplace. Because Europe is in, I would say, perhaps even worse economic straits than we are, and you see some countries like Spain decreasing a lot of their feeding tariffs, a lot of the subsidies for renewables, that there's a diminution of the market. But it's the local markets that actually help stimulate manufacturing in a particular country. And this is why when Spain took away their subsidies and other countries are decreasing, China put in feeding tariffs for their market in wind and solar. So they ratcheted it up because they recognized that they want to nurture their industries. They need a home market to make sure that they're going to be, they want to catch up in wind turbine technology. They are becoming dominant force in solar technology, but they see both of those at risk. And so as you saw, Europe's subsidies decreased. They said, okay, we want to develop our home market. And the world is expecting this year that China will be the biggest deployer of renewable energy in the world. Let's go back to the United States. If we don't have a home market for these things, industries would not be motivated to develop manufacturing at home. They would be less motivated to develop those technologies. The next generation of solar, for example, you know, NREL was the developer, essentially the inventor developer of the CAD Telluride cells. There's a number of solar companies making thin film CAD Telluride technology. Those technologies are continuing to improve. One doesn't know whether silicon or CAD Tel or some other technology, but they're certainly a player in that field and they're certainly in a competitive race. So I think to have a home market for a clean energy standard, a production tax credit, those are mechanisms that can stimulate private sector investment that then stimulates manufacturing in the United States. And this is why, yes, China wants to export, but they also realize that we have to create a home market as well. And it's this mixture that they need. And you're implying if we don't extend the PTC, that home market mission that we've all agreed in a bipartisan way is crucial. Well, it goes to ways of how do you get a market draw? How do you help bring slightly lower cost financing to these projects? All those things. You talk to any supplier of wind, they would rather set up a supply chain in the country where these things are being installed. This is heavy stuff. And so in the solar world, it's more like a commodity that can be shipped worldwide, 
but it is going to heavily be influenced. Now, as wind technology, as I noted before, is, is getting very, very close to price parity with uh, new gas. Uh, new gas, let me be careful, new gas at four to six dollars a million cubic feet, you know, uh, which is considered, you know, if you have it in the next 10 or 20 years, this is what EI is projecting. Um, solar has dropped by more than 75%. The solar modules have dropped by more than 75% in the last three years. Everybody anticipates another 50% drop at least in the next five to eight years. And so solar is going to be competitive with any new form of energy. And so again, we need, we need to spur this market because these, this could be, this is clean energy without subsidy, uh, that the world will want. And as I said repeatedly, we're either going to be buying or selling. And I'd rather be selling. Selling. We all would. I know uh, my time's about to expire, but on the critical minerals hub, uh, what are you doing at DOE to ensure that the DOE labs, university partners, and industry are working together on the hubs? Can you give a brief answer and then sure uh, uh, answer for the record? Very, very brief answer. Even the design of the hubs, are they, they, if we select a hub, they have to come in with the design. And what are they doing at the get-go to have industry uh, and the national labs and universities? Uh, I was just visiting a hub in uh, computation for nuclear reactor simulation. Um, and it was wonderful because they said at the very beginning, what are the problems that industry is interested in? Let's say a premature aging of the fuel rods. Uh, how do you extract more energy from those fuel rods? Uh, how do you make those uh, the reactors safer? Uh, those are the things that industry actually sits with every day. And, and can you simulate this? Can you simulate erosion processes that they see? And, and so from its very design, it was uh, we can use the powers of high-performance computing, the intellectual powers of people in universities, national labs, to help industry solve these problems. And, and so the hubs are specifically designed for that. The other thing I very quickly should mention is that we have also been easy made to have technology transferred uh, from national laboratories and universities, but national laboratories, since we help control the technology transfer policies, um, we've just had a very exciting meeting, uh, about 250 people attended, people from industry, uh, on the uh, uh, materials you would need for solving a lot of the energy challenges. This is not only from a take materials, this is lightweight uh, steels and alloys and composites, everything, because it's going to be, it, it's going to be dominated by new materials. 250 people came. A lot of companies, a lot of excitement. Immediately, uh, the first week of payoff uh, was, um, uh, you know, venture capitalists are inviting people from the labs to come. The other labs are saying, this really works. We're going to do this too. Uh, we have another one on advanced com computation, how that can help in the industry. It's just to tie the, so the people in the national labs know what the industry problems are and that they, they can be excited about helping them solve those problems. And so this, again, is something that has been occurring over the last year. But we're I take from you that this is really important. You're really focused on it. You're right. going to work with all these stakeholders. Thank you, Mr. Right. Secretary. Thank you. Uh, Senator Mann.